you know, so here, here's an analogy of something that, you know, I observed growing up in a church community, but I think it's, I think it's true of like belief systems and community of believers, whether it's politics, religion, or anything else. So in your average church, you usually have only about a handful of people, assume that it's a mid to large size church. You usually only have like about a handful of people who really know the first principles of that belief system. People that have studied up on theology, people that are capable of having conversations about Christian apologetics, people that can talk with an atheist who will be like, well, do you really believe that a snake literally spoke and actually not get defensive about it and have an intelligent conversation about it, right? There, there, there's a small number of people that want that conversation and that can have it. The overwhelming majority of people in the church, they don't even read their Bible all that much. You know, they can't really like quote a bunch of scriptures. They, they'll they probably get upset if an atheist bum rushes them like, well, why were there, you know, 1,233 people in the census according to the book of Isaiah? But then the book of Numbers says this, ah, those people like get upset and stuff like that. They're not ready for that conversation. And when you talk to those people, you find that the basis for their belief is something that's far more experiential. It's far more personal. It's something that has nothing to do with all of those arguments you're studying upon and, and, and trying to debate them about. I say that because when it comes to politics, I think the mistake a lot of us make, we spend our time listening to podcasters, political commentators, politicians, people who make their living being in the relatively small space of those who study the ideas and talk about it all the time. And then we go from that to talking with ordinary people, everyday individuals, hardworking people who don't even like read books on this stuff. And, and we treat them like we're talking to the political commentator. And you, you have like, I lived in California, Los Angeles for 10 years. And there were so many people there who in their, in their liberal bubble, they just assume that if you voted for Trump, you're a racist. It, it seemed plain to them. But you know what? Many of them, they, they didn't actually know any people that voted for Trump. They, they never had coffee or went to the bar with somebody who voted for Trump and said, you know, tell me about your view. All they knew is what they saw from Trump himself, what they saw from political commentators who defend Trump. And then when they go talk to ordinary Trump voters, voters it's like, oh, you must be a racist. And so I think just engaging, you don't even need a communication technique, just actually go talk to real people. You know, like consider it intellectually irresponsible to make comments about people who say this or people who say that unless, unless you actually know some people in that demographic. It's like, don't be the kid who lives in an all white suburb, doesn't know any black people and says, you know, I can't say what I wanna say or black people are gonna call me racist. I actually go meet a real black person. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> before you do that to yourself, right? Same thing with Trump voters or or BLM or or feminists or you know MAGA cap wearing people. Doesn't matter. Just talk to real people. You know. Yeah. Get your ideas from the people that actually believe. It. I'll shut up after this. I promise. No, you're good. No, you're good. This is something that I I had to learn as a Christian when I began to study other religions and worldviews. If I want to know about Buddhism, I'm not going to go talk to a Christian who used to be a Buddhist. I'm not gonna go talk to a Christian who wrote a, a Christian book about Buddhism and why it's demonic. I'm gonna go talk to an actual Buddhist. I wanna talk with somebody that practices it right now. I'm not gonna talk to the bitter guy who grew up in a bit Buddhist home and deviated from the faith because he hates it. Nope, only person I wanna talk to are people that actually practice that form of spirituality and they believe it's changing their lives. I wanna learn about it from them. Same thing if I wanna study Islam, I, I, I wanna hear about it from the practicing Muslim. If I want to understand what it's like to be a Republican, I want to talk to somebody that truly is Republican. I, I don't want to hear the Democrat make a video, you know, or, or even something like, you know, I saw Ben Shapiro. He's got a book review of white fragility. This is not how I do research. <laughs> I, I don't want to I don't want to limit my understanding to like Ben Shapiro telling me about white fragility. You know what? I'm going to go read the book. And if I disagree with it, I'm going to disagree with it because I read it myself. If I make fun of it, I'm going to earn the right to make fun of it because I read it myself. I don't ever want to live or think through a political commentator, even if I respect them. And I think having that kind of mindset will take you so much further in your interactions with people. 